All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call the uh, Legislative Oversight Commission on Education Accountability to order because uh, we do have a tour to come up and it's going to take a little time. So everyone can take their seats. And before we begin, I'd just uh, like to thank uh, WVU for hosting us. I meant to say that the last meeting, so appreciate you all having us here. Um, first order roll call, we have a uh, um, quorum, so I uh, ask the co-chair to make a motion for the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes from April 24, 2022. All right. You heard the motion. Any additions, deletions, corrections? Chair hears none. All in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Eyes have it. Motion adopted. Uh, we have uh, item four, presentation uh, and tour of WVU's deferred maintenance issues. Rob Alsop, Vice President of Strategic Initiatives. Rob, I'll have you come on up. You have the floor. Thank you. Well, good afternoon and welcome. We hope you have a great set of interims and enjoy um, Mon County and, and WVU. No, Chancellor Tucker, I think at the last set of interims, gave a discussion um, to an interim committee on uh, deferred maintenance. And so um, as a as a group um, of higher education, um, while we are good stewards of our properties and take care of our facilities, um, we do not have sufficient resources to take care of all of our maintenance. And so there are times when, whether it's a chiller or an HVAC system or other sort of background infrastructure, uh, we don't have enough in our annual budgets to take care of those and we have to defer that maintenance. And so every company has, every business will have um, a set of deferred maintenance challenges that they need to take care of. Um, as you'll see over the next couple of days, we're quite proud of our campus and everything that we do. Um, and we are invested in taking care of our properties with over 15,000 acres and several hundred buildings. Uh, we spend um, around $30 million of our operational capital every year on things like deferred maintenance, refreshing our classrooms, technology upgrades, and taking care of it. We've also issued uh, debt to try to take care of some of our infrastructure challenges. And so you'll see in the handout where over the past several years, uh, we've issued debt to try to take care of some of our deferred maintenance challenges. So for example, um, you can see 2007 in Brooks Hall, we did a significant overhaul of that building. Um, and we're spending right now about $45 million on our Health Sciences Center. Um, and so we've done a number of um, existing renovations to take care of our existing property and new buildings when it makes sense for our deferred maintenance. Nonetheless, we had a study done. We're in the middle of our 10 year master planning process. Over the next 10 years, we need to spend over $600 million to take care of all of our capital replacement and deferred maintenance issues. Um, and there are similar stories for both four year and two year institutions um, across the state. And our COB wanna give a plug in not only for WVU, but for all of our institutions of higher ed to, to meet deferred maintenance needs. And so, we want to continue to have a conversation with the legislature if there are one time monies that could be invested to take it to have us help take care of some of our deferred maintenance challenges um, moving forward. And so we thought the best way to show you, you'll see hopefully with Reynolds Hall and other things, some of our best things and what we have done to, to move our campus forward. But we thought we'd ask um, um, the oversight committee to take a tour and take a look at some of the areas where we do have some deferred maintenance. So I'm happy to answer any questions quickly, but if not, we thought the best way to do it would be on, go on a little bus tour and show you um, what we're talking about when, um, for what we would deploy to take care of some of our existing deferred maintenance issues. Um, so with that, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to answer any questions, or if not, we can go jump on a bus and, and take a little tour. All right, we'll see. Does anyone have any quick questions? Uh, I was gonna ask just one briefly. Do you know offhand what the percentage of uh, WVU's budget is that you put towards maintenance out of all these numbers you have here. Um, so our, sure, so our, um, so as far as employees that are dedicated towards keeping up the campus, it would be a bigger number, but just the actual money that we put. So for example, we spend a million dollars to upgrade a classroom or something. That's around 30 million in operational cash. We're around a billion dollar budget. So that'd be about 3%. Uh, we've issued debt where the average over the past seven or eight years has been about 65 million. Um, but 
I wouldn't include our our debt issuances in our sort of operational budget. So it's around that three to five percent. Three to five yes. percent. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. That's what I was going to ask. Any further questions before we go on our tour? All right. And before we do go on the tour, I will just mention one thing. I was told uh, that we will take bus on tour. They'll come back here. Buses will take us back to hotels, and then to Dr. Gee's uh, reception. Buses will take us over to that and back. Okay, so just so you're aware of that. Okay. And um, I do want to note, Mr. Chairman, if I could, Ted Svelik, um is our senior associate vice president in charge of business and auxiliary services, and so he'll be um, leading the tour. So the bus is down front and ready to go, and and Ted will walk you through some of the things we're going to see on our Evansdale campus. I guess you can. Thank you. And, uh, Great, so if you if, for those folks going on the tour, if you just follow me downstairs and we'll head right out into the circle in front of uh, Harrison Alumni Center, there's a uh, uh, bus waiting.